Good evening and welcome to Law Seeker's Thorough News Paper Analysis for the 26th of June 2023. Now today we have one editorial article which has been taken from the Indian Express and it is titled A Code for Gender Justice. It basically highlights the importance of parity between gender laws uh, in the coming UCC if it comes to an enactment stage. For the second and the third segment of the day, we will have the news update and the legal. Now, for today's editorial article, we had discussed about this a couple of days back. And as we remember, the 21st Law Commission had stated that the Uniform Civil Code was not important or feasible given the stage India was in. Now, why was so? The 21st Law Commission had held that, yes, there were disparities and there were differences amidst uh, the population of Indians. But that should not be abolished because that was a sign that India was functioning as a healthy democracy. We, after all, are a land of many people and many cultures. But the 22nd Law Commission went on to disregard uh, in its entirety uh, the views of the 21st Law Commission and now is seeking the view of the public on the issue. Now, one of the reasons why the Uniform Civil Code is relevant is that it has become a very politicized idea. What should have remained in the genre of the in the genre of the legislature alone has now become a political issue that is being passed between two parties. Now, firstly and foremostly, the religious issues of the UCC. Now, although the code is supposed to be enforceable on all, it has primarily gained popularity as an anti-Muslim enactment. Now, the views of the conservative Muslims and the Hindutva outfits have further fueled this idea. Is the UCC an anti-Muslim enactment at all? And if so, why? These are the arguments that have actually been never ventured it's just that there is one religious outfit that's claiming that, yes, this is against the interests of what we've held for so long. It's against our identity. And there is another religious outfit that is continuously bickering with them and stating that this is what you should do because whatever you have been doing for so long is wrong. Now, it seems that the reform for family laws are not a priority for anyone because no one is pointing out what the issues are wrong with the laws. They're just saying that whatever you have been doing is wrong. But if that is the statement that you want to make, and if that is a point you want to establish, you also have to establish what they're doing wrong. And while the argument spans over a lot of issues, family laws and gender just laws are not in the discussion because it is not a priority for anyone. Although gender justice should be ensured as soon as possible. And the Muslim women must be taken into consideration while reforming family laws, because as we know, there are a lot of lacunas when it comes to child custody, guardianship or distribution of meher. And the Muslim women are at a disadvantageous position due to their Sharia application laws. And if the UCC were actually to come to force, this would be the opportune moment to correct those wrongs. Now, the Muslim law conundrum, the Muslim family laws should have been codified based on the progressive reading of the texts from where they derived, while also keeping in mind the core values of the Indian constitution. Now, is this something that should have been done? While you may quarrel this, it's good to remember that this thing did happen. The Hindu laws were completely overhauled and they were done so while reading the text in a progressive manner with an open mind and also incorporating the core values that were laid out in the Indian constitution. Now, the Indian Muslims, when we talk of them, are ruled by the Sharia Application Act of 1937, which does not talk of very important things like consent, right to meher, age of marriage, divorce, guardianship, and custody of children, and also women's share in cases of polygamy. Now, one of the core contentions has been that the Islamic laws allow polygamy. While it has been held even by the 21st Law Commission in its findings and by the Supreme Court, that it was found that it was not the 
people who were born as muslims who were practicing polygamy as much as people who were converting to the religion of islam just because they wanted to solemnize multiple marriages now when we talk of gender just laws under the entire islamic law regime is that even possible well countries like indonesia and morocco have turned the sharia laws into gender just laws they have taken the initiative and they have acted upon it so while the lawmakers actually go forward and debate about the uniform civil code and what must be there and what must not be there ensuring legal parity for muslim women should be considered as one of the key goals of the ucc the ucc should also be providing protection for marital rape and account for gender diversity and this goes across all religions love jihad which is a very serious allegation and a very aggravated crime that is happening nowadays must also be stringently dealt with under the ucc now for the news updates of the day Firstly, we have government introduces two changes as it amends the electricity rules 2020. The government of India has introduced two changes to the prevailing power tariff system through an amendment to the electricity rights of consumers rules 2020. The changes are the introduction of the time of day tariff and the rationalization of smart metering provisions. The Ministry of Power has said. Secondly, we have Vikram and Pratham to return for another tryst with the moon. The Indian Space Research Organization plans to retain the names of Chandrayaan 2 lander and rover for their Chandrayaan 3 equivalents as well. This means the Chandrayaan 3 lander will bear the name Vikram after Vikram Sarabhai, who is considered as the father of the Indian space program, and the rover Pragyan. A propulsion module will carry the land. a uh, lander rover configuration to a 100 km lunar orbit once the vikram lander module makes it safely to the moon it will deploy pragyan which will carry out in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface during its course of mobility thirdly in a proud moment of india we have diksha claims the check ladies open title indian golfer diksha dagar is making strides in rising in the worlds of golf picking up the trophy at the tip sport check ladies open she registered a win with a four shot lead picking up the second ladies european title of her career diksha won her first ladies european title in 2019 when she was in her rookie year she was also a part of the winning team aramco team series in london in 2021 it has been a strong 2023 for the indian golfer who has recorded four top 10 finishes to date this year In another proud moment for India, Prime Minister Modi has been conferred with the Order of the Nine, which is one of the highest prizes that are given, uh, highest recognition awards that are that is given by the Egyptian government. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Sisi on the twenty fifth of June conferred the country's highest state honor, Order of the Nile Award, on Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Instituted in nineteen fifteen, the Order of the Nile is conferred upon heads of states, crown princes, and vice presidents who offer Egypt or humanity invaluable services. This is the thirteen such highest state honor that various countries across the world has conferred upon our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Order of the Nile is a pure gold collar consisting of three square gold units comprising pharaonic symbols. Now, for the legal updates for the day, we have wife as homemaker contributes to husband's acquisition of assets and is entitled to the equal share in properties. So, the Madras High Court in the case of Kanneya Naidu and others versus Kamsala Ammal and others. recently held that a wife who contributed to the acquisition of family assets by performing the household chores would be entitled to an equal share in the properties as she had directly contributed to its purchase as she had indirectly contributed to its purchase justice krishnan ramaswamy observed that though there was no legislation at present that recognized the contribution made by the wife the court could very well recognize the same the court added that the law does not prevent a judge from recognizing the contributions of a housewife So this was all for today. For free study materials and PNA PDF slides, please join our Telegram channel. The link of which you can find in the description given below, or you can always scan the barcode that is given on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube to stay up to date with the current newspaper analysis as it comes out every day.
थैंक यू